and today I'm going to show you how to use this online simulation tool to continue with our labs. Okay, here that's the web page, and as you can see, that's the link, which is the address of this website. And of course, you can either choose to sign in with your Google account or the UB account. You can register with your UB ID, UB email address, or you can just click the simulation without the username. That's completely fine. Okay, so that's the platform. It looks like you know, we have, you can consider this a breadboard, you can draw a schematic here, and you have many components like inputs, you can use those apples, you can use gates, decoder, multiplexers, and some sequential elements like uh, D-flip-flop, uh, that's the T-flip-flop, GK, D, and I think, yeah, we have the SR flip-flop as well. Of course, the clock, you can consider that uh, function generator in our lab. Uh, for the test bench and the mask, we don't really need them, so let's leave, leave them for the future. Okay, so today what I'm going to show you is how to build this circuit, which is a one in lab four. We that, did that, well, I think most of you have already done that before the spring break. So it's relatively easy, and I hope you can get a feeling about how to to the simulation instead of really hand on the breadboard uh, from my tutorial. Okay, so as you can see for this experiment, we need at least one NOT gate, two AND gate, two AND gates, and one OR gate. Of course, we, we, we need multiple LDs as indicators of the status of those inputs or the output. And for the fortunately for this simulation tool, we don't need to, we don't need really need to worry about the in the power supply or the ground, and um, yeah, we we only need to think think about the logic through the circuit. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, for the input, as you can see, for two one marks, we need three inputs. Two of the two of the inputs, they are the input A and input B, and the third one, basically that's a select input, we call that S or just a select. And there are three inputs. For the output, of course, we need to use some LEDs. Here, I suggest you to use a digital LED. So that's the easiest one, very easy to use. Here, you don't need to differentiate the anode and cathode of the LED, because here, you know, we have only one pin. That's just the input for the output. You don't need to worry about that. Okay, I just put it somewhere. We can always replace that, relocate that later. Uh, for two MX, we need two AND gates, one NOT gate, and of course we need one OR gate. Okay, excellent. And then let's try to build a connection. And there's a second one. Oh, sorry. Okay, so as you can see here, I made a small mistake, and I don't really want this piece of connection. I can right click and click delete. Then it's gone. Of course, I can always drag that to any other places on the, you know, this kind of, you can call that red word or just on the board. Okay, that's the third input. And I would like to drag that to the NOT gate and input the other pin. And from this place, come to the other input of the AND gate. OK, excellent. And then from the output of this AND gate, output that to one input of the OR gate. Same thing for the other AND gate. OK, here we go. Then let's try to place those mm, LEDs. For this one, let's just assume this is the output from the, you know, from this OR gate, and we have three, three more LEDs. I can directly pull that, uh, connect that with this, this, this wire. Uh, okay, that's the second one. 
and I can place the third LED that output to this input. Okay, so here we go. Right now, I can turn it on, off, then the LED will be turned to right or just off. Okay, so basically that's a true one max. As you can see here, if the select is zero, then the output here for this two one max will be falling with the second input. You see, when the input B is on, the output is on, B is off, output is off, but for A, it doesn't truly really matter. And then if I turn the select to be one, then B doesn't matter anymore, and the output will be falling with input A. Okay, so of course, you, you know, here I can turn on all the four LEDs and they are all of the color right. And you know, if you, you try to do some other simulation and you want to differentiate the color of the LEDs, yeah, actually, it's pretty easy. Click the LED and zoom, and you can just screw down, and you can see here that the properties. And for the delay, we don't need to worry about that for this moment. I will try to explain that later if I re we really need to use that. But here, if you want to change the color, just uh, tap in some other color. Like here, maybe I can try to use green. And for this one, maybe I can turn that to yellow. Okay. So, as you can see, they are all on. But the first two LEDs are still with the red color. The output is green. And the select is just uh, yellow. Okay. So that's how we build a circuit, um, you know, from this simulation platform. And of course, just to briefly mention about how to use the clock in on this platform. In that case, you may need to use the sequential elements. And by using the clock, put that in. Of course, we can try to put a LED. Then let's build connection. And then, as you can see, the clock will change, alternate with certain frequency. Then the output, which is the LD, will change accordingly. For more detail about how to use this platform, we have many other options. Like, you know, you can always refer to the help. And then they have very detailed instructions on how to use this website and uh, about how all, all those tutorials about all those elements, those components, which can be used on this website. And yeah, that's a very powerful tool, so I hope you can enjoy that um, for the rest of the labs in E178. Okay, thank you very much.